Hi everybody, um, I hope you'll come back feeling refreshed and caffeinated. Um, our next session, as Sean said, is all about creating digital on a shoestring. And as uh, she mentioned in her welcome note, you know, magic money trees didn't just appear at the start of the pandemic um, and teams that were already having to find kind of creative ways to use digital um, were pushed even harder. Uh, to find uh, innovative ways to engage with their audiences. So I'm really pleased that this session is going to feature two true, true digital creatives who are going to share some of their experiences with us. Um, we have Helen Ward from the Ashmolean Museum, um, who's going to talk to us about home learning resources and making them on a shoestring. Uh, and then that's going to be followed by uh, Leah Dungay from the National Video Museum in Sheffield. So I'm going to start off uh, with Helen's talk that will be followed by Leah's. Please put your questions in the chat and then we'll do a kind of combined Q&A for both speakers at the end of the session. This session will run until 12.15, at which point we'll break for lunch. OK, brilliant. So I'm going to start with um, Helen. Uh, Helen is a very experienced museum professional. She started her career as a qualified history teacher um, and then she worked for the Museums, Libraries and Archives Council. For those of you old enough to remember that, uh, the precursor to uh, what was Arts Council England, um, supporting learning provision. And she spent 14 years at the Ashmolean Museum, where she's deputy head of learning, um, managing a variety of learning, interpretation and audience development projects with a particular um, interest and specialism in digital. So, Helen, I'll hand over to you. Thank you, Helen. Um, and it's, it's really good to, um, to, to have the chance to speak to people today. Um, as Helen said, I'm, I'm based in Oxford also um, at the Ashmolean, which is the um, Ox is, is our, a Museum of Art and Archaeology um, in Oxford. Um, and I'm going to be talking about the packages that I created with colleagues um, at the start of this year um, that were specifically to, to um, respond to the need um, for people home learning, of which there were many. Um, that I worked on with um, lovely colleagues, um, Rowan and Claire, who can't be with me this morning, unfortunately, but have recorded some clips, so you get to hear from them too. Um, so if you bear with me a second, um, and I will just share my slides. Um, okay, so those of you who uh, don't know the museum, um, there we go, that's the, the entrance to the Ashmolean. Um, and normally, pre-pandemic, pre we have a very busy um, schools programme, very busy families programme, but of course, everything changed last year. And we were literally just getting back on our feet, starting to feel our way with um, online programmes. And Karen, of course- Just to pause you there, we can't see your slides at the moment. Oh, okay, right, let me come out and try that again. So bear with me a second. Sorry about that. No problem. Can you see that now? We can now. Thank you, Helen. Oh, right. OK, brilliant. I'll try again. <laughs> OK, so, yeah. Um, Basically, we were, we were needing to rethink things at the start of the year. Um, so um, to give you a little bit of background, um, we, um, we have, um, well, one of the things that I um, work on at the Ashmolean is um, I've always looked after our web pages and also our big collection of online learning resources. Um, and that's something um, that, that has, goes back quite a long time, goes back to sort of 2009 when the museum had gone through a big redevelopment um, and relaunched um, and there were new programmes and the resources were all kind of uh, part of, of that sort of engaging with, with schools. Um, but um, because of limited budget, um, limited time, all the things that we keep hearing, um, and, and also the technology available over 10 years ago, um, it, we'd always had a focus very much on creating resources for teachers. Um, and we were generally pretty focused on how the resources would um, support pre and post visit work. And so what you see there are two of the kind of main resources that we would offer. So, and we still do. 
Um, so zoomable images of objects from the collection, which are still hugely popular with teachers and very helpful for them to use back in the classroom. And then also um, supporting teacher notes. Um, we had done some bits of film, um, but because film in the past had tended to be something that needed budget, um, that was kind of quite limited. And so what you're seeing here are the things basically that we in the learning team could create um, and you know, could, could sort of share with teachers and, and still you know, are used and are very popular. But the situation in January 2021 um, was clearly that a resource a bit like the one that you're seeing on the screen there is not actually much help to um, children who are sitting at home or children who are maybe in a very small class at school with lots of, of other year groups. Um, you know, it, 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 that is not something that is going to be helpful. It needed to be something that was much more direct and focused on, um, on the needs of, of sort of children um, learning in that situation. Um, and I think clearly January 2021 was our third lockdown. Um, going back sort of to the first lockdown, we've just not been able to, to respond as quickly as we had liked. I think also perhaps like many hadn't realized it was it was going to all go on for, for as long as it did and so I think there was there was a lot that we had explored at that time and we had done some things like sharing kind of little collections of, of jigsaws um, but we also then got furloughed um, and so I think January 2021 was a moment of right we are going to take all those conversations and all those things that we've explored and we are going to look at how we can respond to this very immediate need of lots of people suddenly thrown back into homeschooling children. And so the question clearly was, how can we do that? How can we look at what we have and adapt it in a way that makes it work for that scenario? Um, and also recognizing that the nature of homeschooling is that you've often got children of a variety of ages, and so in some ways, it's, it's more it, the needs of the audience are as much about um, family learning and about sort of how it's different age children and parents um, being able to sort of explore a topic together. Lots more challenges. Um, limited budget. Um, as I say, this has generally been an area of work where it's been through projects that there's been investment. So there was very limited sort of budget to be able to tap into. Um, limited time. Um, myself and Rowan were both also homeschooling at this time. So whilst it gave us a very good insight of, of the needs of the audience, it also meant we were very pressured on what we were able to deliver. Um, and actually in the wider museum, limited capacity because across the sector, digital teams have been stretched incredibly thin. Um, and although they were really up for being able to help, um, they also had very limited time to be able to, 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 to work with us. Um, and then actually the biggest challenge in many respects was around branding. Um, and the image here of this, this is Elias Ashmole, who's the sort of founder of the museum. Um, and we had gone through as a museum um, a rebrand literally just before um, lockdown. So branding was quite high up on, on thinking. And I think in our earlier conversations and some of our experiments with film in the autumn, there'd been a real concern that what we were wanting to do was not going to be of what was regarded a high enough quality, that it was a bit going to be a bit rough around the edges. Um, and that's what we were coming up against was, was sort of, you know, not just what is it that we're creating and how are we going to deliver it, but also what does it look like and, and are we happy to put it out there as Ashmolean? So um, all those things in the mix, um, it was the sort of, it was a moment to really kind of think about, well, what actually is available to us? That all sounds very sort of um, bleak, but actually stepping back, um, you know, there was an awful lot that, that we um, could draw on. And the sort of questions that we were asking, well, what are the needs of our audience? Now, I think we could, as I say, feel pretty confident that through our existing work with um, schools and families, through the work that Claire had been doing, starting to get online programmes going in the autumn term, 
we were, you know, and also pre-pandemic, we were pretty confident that we knew what that audience wanted um, and that it was about it being curriculum linked, but also delivering it in a way that, um, you know, was, was accessible to a range of, of ages. It was then a question of, well, how do we actually create and package something that meets those needs? And how do we shift away from, you know, PDFs and so on that are great for teachers, but don't really sort of cut it for children and families sort of already drowning in things like sort of um, twinkle worksheets and, and so on. It's, it was about, well, how do we how do we offer something that is is going to grab people's interest? Um, and of course, you know, the big starter in all that is our collection. Um, we, we are really lucky to work with a collection that pretty much hits most areas of the primary history history curriculum. And so the start starting point was very much about, well, how do we take that and offer a really object rich experience that allows you to get a taste of what we have at the museum and a sort of taste of, of what the spaces are that you might visit if you came to the museum. Um, but also to then give um, a creative outlet as well and to offer some of the kind of craft activities that we would normally offer through things like drop in events. Um, and then in terms of skills. Um, it, what sort of, um, you know, I think echoing what Sean was saying at the start of the morning, I think the thing is that although there were new skills we needed to learn in terms of how to deliver di digitally, a big aspect of this project was actually about You've got someone who manages the primary program, someone who manages the families program, someone myself who looks after um, the online resources and has access to the content management system and is able to use that. That's actually a lot of um, expertise um, that you can draw from um, and think about how do you translate that into creating content. Um, and then finally, um, it was actually a really good opportunity to look at, um, to, to follow up actually some of the tools that I'd particularly been aware of, but sometimes until you have a need to use them, they kind of sit there slightly unexplored. And so it was, um, and, and I'll, I'll talk more a little bit later about the tools that we did use, um, but it was actually a really good opportunity to say, look, there's loads of free stuff out there. You know, things have moved on significantly from when we first started creating learning resources let's have a look at what we might use um, so that's that those are the sort of questions that we were asking and then what came from that um, were um, four packages that we released between February and May 2021 so we were able to move pretty fast um, from the early conversations in January um, to then delivering these four packages so the, this this one you see here the ancient Olympics um, this was the first one that we released um, and all of them were very kind of um, very much linked to the curriculum. So the big hitters of um, Greece um, and Egypt, which are the sessions that are by far the most heavily booked at the Ashmolean. Um, but we also um, created a package on China, um, which tied in with Chinese New Year. And then the last package we created was Anglo-Saxons. Um, so all, all sort of tied in with curriculum. And then in terms of content, the approach that we took um, was to then chunk the content and to have both film. Um, so what you see here is one of the films that Claire Coleman um, created um, to give a sort of exploration of the, um, the galleries and objects. But then a, a little quiz that allowed people to sort of just have a go at sort of seeing if, they, if they'd sort of taken on sort of the main learning. Um, and then also jigsaws and also craft activities. Um, and a lot of this was, was taking things that we've done in the past, not necessarily digitally, but looking at how to package them in, in, in a new way. So first of all, I'm just gonna um, share um, a little bit of um, film now from um, Claire Coleman, um, who, as I say, um, was, is our primary learning officer. And she's gonna talk a little bit about the sorts of things that we had conversations about collectively and that she had to take on board for, for her role in the project. Hello, I'm Claire Coleman and I'm from the Ashmolean Museum. And my task for the online packages was to create short films to engage children either at home or um, in the classroom with objects and paintings from our collections. This was quite a daunting prospect. I'd never made a film before. 
I had my loft, my laptop, a Zoom account, and it all had to be done in one take as we didn't really have access to an editor. So drawing on my experience from the autumn term when I was live streamed classrooms, I started by creating a storyboard. So the story and then a PowerPoint as the storyboard using high resolution object images, paintings, animated slides, um, and also some gallery shots to give it a bit of context. Now, with the China package, I had a little bit of a struggle to start off with, but then I realized that there were two stories to tell. So it became two films, one Shang Dynasty China and one Chinese New Year. I tried various learning approaches so that they weren't just listening to me, but I was inviting them to some kind of action. So looking really closely, seeing if they could spot some detail or some damage or something like that. Um, thinking about a particular question or an actual action to movement. So for example, with an ancient Greek cast of a discus thrower, we struck the pose or invited them to strike the pose and then figure out how the sports person might move. Um, the content was completely new. Um, it was designed that these packages would sit alongside existing content and add to that. And the final job with each film was to make sure that it was subtitled for reasons of accessibility. So thank you for listening. Those are my tips. Bye for now. Hello, I'm Claire Coleman. Apologies. And I'm the primary. Okay, so that's Claire talking about the films she created. And the, the other um, part of the team um, was Rowan, who's our family learning officer. Um, so I'm going to share what Rowan has to say about um, her role. Hi, my name is Rowan Guthrie and I am the Family Learning Officer at the Ashmolean Museum. So my role in this project was to create um, the craft activities, which we made into short videos of about a minute and a half, so that families and school teachers could access these from home. I'll just share my screen and show you an example of um, the crafts. So this was make an ox cart for Chinese New Year. Um, it was quite challenging to create these crafts. I did it from the kitchen table. There was a lot of sweeping things to one side so that I could take photographs. I took photographs of everything that you would need for the craft and then a photograph of each step to make the, the craft. So I thought carefully about um, recycling material, things that people would have available at home um, so they wouldn't have to go out and buy anything and it would be really accessible. Um, quite a different way of working because in the museum we're mostly template based in our work um, but we wanted to make something a bit more flexible to do at home. It's really helpful to have an extra pair of hands and these hands belong to my children who had to demonstrate the steps while I stood up on a chair and took a photo down onto the kitchen table. Um, try and use lots of bright colours, um, be eye-catching if you can. So lots of red in this one for Chinese New Year. Um, make the captions really short and clear and to the point is another top tip I would give. And think about light. Try and do your photographs um, within a, a period of a few hours or so, because if you do it over the length of the day, you get the shadows moving around. So I hope you find these top tips useful and that that will give you um, a bit of inspiration perhaps to have a go and make um, your own uh, short craft video. Thank you for listening. Bye. Hi, my name is Rowan Gar so I was really lucky that it was um, really a, a very collaborative effort and playing, as you see, to, to people's strengths. Um, and so um, in terms of those films that Rowan um, was creating, she was we would plan them all together, the three of us, and link it very closely to the film that Claire was, was going to create and select the objects. And then Rowan would, would do all that set up and involve her children and then pass it on to me to then actually kind of um, create it into um, a sort of short film. And so in terms of the sort of tools that we were using to do that, um, Claire's films, um, essentially she was recording on Zoom rather like these talks are being recorded today. Um, and so 
you know, obviously challenge was that she was pretty much doing those in one take. Um, but that was something that that sort of worked really well. Um, and the, the, the sort of in, in terms then of, of how we were um, of, of the sort of how we were then hosting, um, partly in a response to, to sort of the, the sort of some of the branding challenges that we faced. Um, we agreed that it made sense to set up a learning um, Vimeo um, channel so that we could basically have control of being able to upload all these films as they were created. It means I can go in and access stats very easily. And so there is a small cost to that. Can't remember, but it's it's under £100 for the, the year. Um, and where we had the help was from our digital comms team at running these films through YouTube to enable them to be subtitled, which is, is obviously really important um, in terms of access. Um, so actually, in many respects, the, the, the sort of the where a lot of the energy went was not around the creation of the film. It was around all that storyboarding and about um, talking through how to structure it and what to be focusing on and sometimes needing as Clash sort of mentioned to think about how to sort of separate things because it was it was getting too much um, so actually you know all the skills that anyone who has delivered any learning programs um, puts into practice when they're designing a session you know just thinking through about what you're trying to achieve and and sort of um, you know how to create a storyboard that that sort of reflects that and um, the the family craft films as I say Rowan was was sort of you know is, is the queen of, of, of kind of um, fantastic craft activities um, and spent huge amounts of time testing those out and and sort of trying to think about um, you know sort of what what people would be able to do at home and then I um, used um, iMovie but obviously if you're on a sort of um, PC, there are other sort of different soft, other different tools that you might use for very simple film. But really, it was really just a case of dropping in slides um, and adding some audio to create those short films. Um, the other tool that I used um, called Figma is how I created the captions, um, which is, you know, actually there are much simpler tools out there that you might use for captioning. But for um, the work we were doing, it enabled me to use all the brand colours and to, to kind of create something that that satisfied um, that, you know, that that sort of expectation. Um, and so that was helpful for resizing and, and captioning. Um, in terms of the other things that were available in the package, so you had those films. Um, we also had jigsaws. Um, and that tool, if you want one really quick, easy tool to use, Jigsaw Planet, I would recommend you literally set up an account for free, you upload a decent quality image, and then it will create lovely jigsaws um, based on your, um, on your image. Um, and that's, you know, that they are, they're hugely popular. They've been popular across all audiences, not just schools, um, but it was nice to be able to pull those out um, to have as a something, um, you know, sort of a bit more interactive for, for children to have a go at. Um, and then the final part of the jigsaw or the, the sort of package um, was um, these little quizzes. And so what you're seeing here is, is one of the, um, the cards from our Egypt um, quiz. And they were created using um, a tool called Genially. Um, which was one that I'd been aware of, and I know our digital comms team had had sort of used um, in, it to sort of prototype um, very sort of simple um, sort of gallery um, interactives. Um, but it, this was the moment to be able to, to sort of take that and use it. Um, and for that, um, there are lots of templates available. And so what I was able to do was to then take those and again use brand colors um, use sort of good quality images just to create really quite simple kind of little quizzes um, that you could have a go at after you'd watch the film um, so genially is one that it, it, it's um, it, it is one that takes quite a bit of time exploring but if it's something that you think is of interest um, there are lots of templates and I think it's one that's used quite a bit as um, in, a, in education as, as well so um, most of those free or very very sort of minimal cost um, as in sort of 
under £100. Um, so how have they been received? Um, so taking these sort of stats here, these are this is our sort of film views. Um, and I think you know, what you see is a um, you know, big surge in that sort of February, March that, that starts to sort of um, starts to sort of wane off. But I think what's um, I think what we've been particularly encouraged by is the average length view. Some of the films that were created that Claire put together were quite long. You know, they were longer than we'd set out to do. Um, I think the Ancient Olympics film, which is the most popular of the films, is about 20 minutes, which is, is actually quite a long time. Um, so you know, that, that I think is, is really encouraging. Um, and then in, in terms of quiz plays, um, again, you can see a good take up there of, of people engaging with that content. Um, and again, Ancient Olympics with being the first one that, that was, was released um, at the sort of time when people were probably most in need of it. Um, is the sort of or has been the most popular um, quiz. Looking sort of beyond that, um, it, as you might imagine, as the situation has changed um, yet again um, and schools have gone back um, and people, you know, relax, um, you know, sort of restrictions have been more relaxed, um, you can clearly see there's been a huge drop off in um, the number of people viewing the films, um, which at first step you might think, oh, that's really disheartening. But actually, I think what it, it sort of says to me is that we need that. Again, it shows why we needed to get on with things pretty quickly. We didn't have the luxury of spending ages deciding how to go at this. We needed to get on with it and, and get people at the time when they really needed the content. Um, and they are still relevant. Um, you know, there are lots of schools where there's children sort of at home because of COVID or even classes who are out. And so it is a resource that Claire is still sharing um, and getting really positive feedback um, from teachers um, about. Um, so it's it, 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 it's not sort of um, that because the numbers have dropped off, you know, oh, well, we're done. Um, it's it's just recognising the situation has changed yet again um, and we're needing to to now look at well where do we go next with this and so really um, you know this is now perfect for us to start thinking about the overall online learning resources and um, they've been in need of a sort of review rethink for some time and it's always been one that sort of ends up sort of being pushed down the to-do list but because, um, you know, we are in this situation now where we're looking at more kind of hybrid ways of working, what's been, you know, a real benefit of this time is it has demonstrated the value of creating content um, and the importance of offering that as well as online programmes, as well as on-site programmes. And so it has sort of shone a light on, on that. Um, and at the moment, um, we uh, within the museum, um, we are working on a new digital content strategy that this will will be able to sort of plug into. Um, and I think the, you know, the bit in all of this is that what this has enabled us to do is to create content, some of it a little bit, you know, rough around the edges, um, but it's a, allowed us to demonstrate what can be delivered. Um, and we can almost view them as prototypes and to, you know, think, well, with some investment, you could potentially take particularly the, the films with the objects and shoot them in gallery. You could have more editing and chunk them even more to make them shorter clips. Um, and if you, were, if, if you were able to do that, you wouldn't be starting from a blank canvas with content. You'd already have pretty much done a lot of that work um, and, you know, you'd be well placed to, to sort of get get sort of going on that um so it's you know it I and mean, the other thing as well it's been interesting looking at stats is that um july and august um you know with holidays and so on the average length of time people were watching films had dropped to about two or three minutes but it's it's now bounced back up again um which i interpret as you know it's because there are more school audiences starting to pick these things up again so um, final thoughts about all this um, and just sort of top tips. Um, I think, you know, completely, I think what Nathan was saying, you know, sort of it's not about, um, you know, 
it's, it's not for everyone. Um, you know, sort of when you're thinking about content, it's really important to be able to put yourself in the shoes of that audience and to be able to think about what it is they actually need. Um, so that is, is you know, sort of I think the first, first thing that is, you know, and, and even if you, you know, you, you're not a parent, you don't know, um, you, you, you're not familiar with the curriculum. I think there are, in, in this kind of um, experience we've had in this last year, you haven't got to go far to talk to um, someone who is in that situation to understand more about what their needs might be. Um, that whole kind of focusing on what can you do rather than seeing all the barriers, which it, it's quite easy to sometimes get caught up in. Um, but I think given all of that, it's, it's also recognising that even with all these kind of free tools and things that can be quite quick wins, it still takes a massive amount of time. And it's, it's recognising that it needs to be part and parcel of what people um, are doing. Um, and, and I think in the past, because we had always been very busy on site, it's something that we, we hadn't always been able to give as much time to as, as we might have liked. Um, structure. Um, so, yeah, structure, um, you know, I think giving kind of plenty of attention to that and thinking about sort of um, having templates that allow you once you created one package to be able to keep just dropping content in once we'd worked it out for the ancient Olympics, the other ones were much quicker to produce. Um, and actually that whole approach to developing content of, of chunks isn't just good for people using it and being able to dip in and do the things that are of interest to them. It's actually really handy in terms of creation as well and being able to sort of share work amongst um, a small team if you if you're working with other people. Um, other things, of course, is just, you know, how do you promote this? Um, and, you know, we because of the sort of speed of all this and, and, and so on, most of our promotion was really just through things like our school's newsletter. Um, but also through the main um, museum e-news, which allowed us to reach um, a lot of people and also coverage on social media. Um, and also, as I've been sort of, you know, sort of sharing, looking at the stats and, and understanding kind of um, the patterns of use and, and what that might be telling you about sort of how you need to move forward. Um, and then I think finally, it's, it's just sort of not being afraid to try things out. Um, and, you know, actually all this stuff can be removed <laughs> in a few clicks so I think it's just thinking you know what just try out some of these new tools see what they might be able to do um, and see how people respond to it um, and yeah I think that's that's probably final kind of thoughts on all this um, so really happy to take questions and also really happy both myself Claire and Rowan for anyone to contact us um, aside from this if they want to find out a bit more. <laughs>